And now, what are the skills that employers are looking for in recent graduates? Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So don't hesitate and click in the notification bell right here. Now back to the question, what are the actual skills that employers are looking for? So typically you will always hear a lot of skills thrown around. So for instance, math, sciences, being good at solving problems, maybe even troubleshooting knowing how to solve problems in chemical reactors, maybe knowing how to iterate in order to obtain the result of a heat exchanger, maybe even working with process simulation may be a skill. But what are the actual skills that employers are looking for? I mean this statistically or more realistically. And I'm going to be basing the whole video in this report, which is from ONET, which is actually a website owned by the US Department of Labor, which is great because this means that the government is actually making surveys to all the companies, maybe public, maybe private, and they are getting and gathering all this important information. And more importantly, guys, I really want to remark that this is actually a survey. So they ask what they want. And remember that typically people don't know what they really want. So they will typically reply on the required skill sets, but you never know what they are actually looking for. Either way, let's give it a quick look and of course, some tips on how to develop such skills. Number one will be complex problem solving. This should not be in question. Of course, if you are an engineer, you should be able to solve problems, not only simple problems, but of course, complex problems. What do we mean with complex? Is typically that they depend on sciences maybe, that they depend a lot of math, and that you require a lot of analytical thinking. Not only that, one thing is to be able to describe the problem, know what you require, but another skill will be to actually be able to solve it, go through the problem and implement the solution. One of the best ways to show complex problem solving skills or abilities will be to actually work on complex problems. And sorry guys, there's no other way. This is pretty similar to learning how to ride a bike. You need to try to do it a lot of times until you master the art of biking. The same is true for complex problem solving. You need to solve a lot of problems in order to get good at problem solving. And not only that, always trying to make the extra step. What are you going to be doing in case A, B, and C? Or what if scenarios? Always go for hard problems and so on. This is by sure one of the best abilities a chemical engineer should have. The next one will be troubleshooting. As stated before guys, you have problems always in engineering, depending on maybe production problems, maybe process problems, design problems, maybe even HR with people or so. And being able to troubleshoot that is always one of the most important tasks in any company. Actually, this is the way in which people show value to the company. If you are able to solve problems, then by definition, you are adding value to a company. And this means that you're actually worth hiring and being maintained in the payroll. And the best way to improve your troubleshooting skills is, of course, troubleshooting. I know it sounds pretty ironic, maybe even sarcastic, but there's no other way. You can, of course, read a lot of content on what if scenarios or how to improve, how to avoid problems, but actually the ability to troubleshoot is definitely something that requires special attention. This one has been already mentioned and it is critical thinking. You require critical thinking for troubleshooting, for complex problem solving and for many other things. When we refer to critical thinking, we are actually referring to the use of reason and logic in order to improve our final conclusions. This means that you are using a set of reasons and you are using logic to solve it eventually to convert this into a final solution or as they know it, a conclusion. The best way to do this is of course on paper, try to solve as much problems as you can using mathematical logic always helps, but of course you will need to eventually apply those critical thinking into actual solutions. Active learning is one of the things that you will always hear from the employers. Actually, it is pretty recommended that you always say that you are eager and that you love learning. And I'm pretty sure that if you're a chemical engineer, this is pretty similar to your profile. Typically, chemical engineers love learning, love to see how we solve things, learn new skills in order to apply them and so on. So this should not be a problem at all for you. But if you happen to hate learning, well, that will be very hard for you guys because chemical engineering requires always getting updated on new trends, new technologies and new processes. 
Sciences is of course something that your employer will require you to know. Why? Because of course all the things that you're going to be seeing, especially in the industry, require a fundamental in science. For instance, we're talking about physics, chemistry, biology, maybe even environmental sciences, and much more. How can you improve this skill set? Well, this is one of the easiest ones in the sense that you should already have the scientific background, meaning that you already studied chemistry one, two, three, and four. Maybe you already have physics one and two. Maybe you also have one or two classes of biology, biochemistry or so. And of course, that you are always willing to learn more about the subject. This is a classical one as well, guys. Whenever I say I am a engineer, I always get the comments. You should be great at math or you love mathematics or so. And in fact, it's true. I am very good at math and I like them. Why? Because they help me to solve problems. Mathematics is something that you will encounter definitely when working. It could be simple mathematics. It could be very complex mathematics, but owning and being confident on that subject definitely sets you apart from all the other engineers or maybe all the other staff in the industry. Good judgment and decision making is one I will consider of the top skills for engineers, especially when you're working with very important equipment, very expensive equipment, and you're producing tons of materials and so on, you have a very high responsibility. But of course, what will happen if you have certain problems? What happens if there's a increasing temperature? What happens if your supplier changes the raw materials? What happens if you need to decrease the total cost of certain material? Well, the problem arises now. The good thing is that you're a chemical engineer and you should be able to make a decision very confidently. And this is very valuable in the professional world because this means that you are no longer a little kid or baby. You can make your own decisions that add value to the company. Be honest guys, there's no straightforward approach to improve such skills. I will say maybe just make a lot of errors, especially when no one cares, when it's cheap, when time is not going to be an issue or so. Typically, this will be cases when you're a junior engineer in training, maybe in a co-op or an internship, because eventually when you grow in your professional career, the more responsibility you have, the more impact your errors will have. Speaking and communication is something that is really, really valuable. Why? Because if you're working with a team, maybe a team of collaborators, or maybe you're working with different departments, with different time zones and different languages, different culture, it's very hard to send a message or to be able to communicate effectively. So if you're able to do that, it's for sure something that companies will really respect. Meaning that if you are an efficient communicator, you have no problems whenever you write your email, you have no problems at all. Whenever you are in a meeting maybe, you have no issues whenever you want to say something. Or even in the chemical plant when you need to communicate something new for operator or so and you do it efficiently, this is something great for you. Now guys, the only way to improve communication skills and so is of course theoretical courses which you can find a lot in the internet but more importantly to practice and this is actually very easy to practice because you can do it with your friends with your colleagues with your partner and maybe even with your family try some social experiments and more importantly try to apply communication at work see what works and see what's not working Monitoring is something very valuable in the industry, especially when you are a process engineer. This means that you are able to follow trends, patterns of all the data, and not only saying, of course, it is increasing or it is stagnant or maybe it's decreasing, but understanding what is the impact of that in the process, in the results. Some quick examples will be the temperature of the reactor, maybe the purity of a distillation column, the actual pressure of the systems, and how these variables affect the final product. And of course, one of the best ways to improve your monitoring skills is, yeah, you know it, monitoring. But how you do monitoring if you don't know how to do it? You can simply do this by analyzing data. Data points, you can find a lot of data points online and try to make sense of them. What happens if certain variable increases? What happens when it decreases? What happens when you change the input and what do you see in the output? And this needs to make sense according to science. For example, you could be saying that the increase in temperature of the reactor will maybe increase the productivity because you are correlating this to your chemical knowledge, but maybe actually this is a exothermic reaction, meaning that this is not going to be favored with an increase in temperature or let it be a addition of heat. 
Time management for sure is something very valuable. Not only your time, of course, but the time of others, of your colleagues, of your boss, of the board of directors, and so on. So time is a very valuable asset. If you can decrease the time for certain type of projects, or you can implement solutions in a very short time, this is a skill that for sure is going to be very valuable. And not only that, guys, maybe the employer will require you to work in several tasks throughout the day. So being able to manage those tasks in the day and being able to perform and to deliver results is something that for sure is going to be greatly appreciated. And finally, guys, I also read that leadership is something very important. And I will argue that maybe some roles do not require leadership and other roles require a lot of leadership. So it will be very hard for me to say you in which cases you will actually require leadership and which will not require leadership. For instance, you may be a process engineer that works with a team of people, of engineers maybe, and of course, or operators or technicians. Or maybe you're a process engineer working with a single process, you're alone, you work with your computer, your stats, you only work with your boss or so. So leadership here will not make that much of a sense. Overall, I will say that leadership is something that our society requires a lot. So although we don't require this in certain roles, I would definitely recommend you guys to try to improve your leadership skills. And we're done guys. Those were the skills I found in this report. I really think it's a very well built report. So if you want to check it out, I will be leaving a link in the description for sure. And more importantly, guys, I really agree with a lot of them. Uh, maybe a pair, or two, three, four of them, I will say that maybe not always you will be required to have that. Of course, it depends a lot on the position, but for sure the top five that we mentioned is classical one. All engineering roles will have that. It's impossible not to have sciences, math, critical thinking, problem solving, troubleshooting, and so on. Either way, guys, this is just a single report from the U.S. Department of Labor. Maybe you agree, maybe you do not agree, that's okay. Let us know in the comment section what other skills were left that you think are very, very important. Maybe design of equipment is something that you really think is important. Maybe knowing how to work in hierarchies is something that you really think is important as well. Maybe negotiation, motivational skills, maybe training or so is something that you really appreciate as well. And that will be it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.